Welcome in, Campo and Joe. I think we might have been missing an action for the last week or so because we've been at the Players' Championship. We were March Madness with all of our hoop action last week. Well, we're back. Campo and Joe, it's good to see my good friend Dave Campo, former Dallas Cowboy head coach, former assistant here in Jacksonville, and now just a diehard Duvaler. I'm Joe C. from XL Primetime, noon to three weekdays, right here on the Superstation. And Coach, I feel like we can just jump right back into the offseason festivities, talk a little bit about what has happened, what hasn't happened, because the Jaguars haven't done hardly anything in free agency. No, no. And, uh, you know, at this point right now, I don't know how much they're going to do, but I, I do know that they're probably in a position to maybe at the end of the whole thing do something right. as a role player at a specific spot. And yeah. hopefully that's what's going to happen. They're able to get a, a veteran that's out there that maybe uh, is not getting what he thought he was going to get, and mm -hmm. they might be able to get a, maybe a, a third down pass rusher or something along those lines. Well, you know what people out there that are watching uh, either on Facebook Live or wherever they pick us up, they're like, bring back the mayor of Saxonville. <laughs> they would love to see Calais Campbell come back. I don't know whether that's possible. Is it possible? Well, the one thing about Calais Campbell is, you know, he can be an inside pass rusher. Mm -hmm. And and that really, you know, back in the day, that he was on the same side as, as Josh Allen yep. when Josh Allen had the big year. I think he's got a little something left. Uh, he's not the type of guy that would hold a grudge. Like trying to get uh, Ramsey back here would be <laughs> probably a rough situation. Yeah. But uh, Oren Gakwe. But True, uh, who, Calais, who is still out there. Well, Calais, if it's, you know, he loved Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. I think if if it was a right situation and it, and it gets to that point, I think it would probably help us. And it might, and it might be good for him as well. You don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. That is very true uh, because, you know, familiar confines, he gets to come back in his career. He has had what might be a French Hall of Fame career. Uh, and he's a Hall of Fame guy. That's for sure. All right, so let's talk about what has happened, what hasn't happened, and then we're going to look around the AFC South just a little bit. But the the main things at home was that they needed to make a decision. We talked about them tagging Evan Ingram. I think you were on that the entire time. And since we've been on, you know, on the road so much, I don't really think Campo and Joe's commented on Juwan Taylor getting $80 million. Right. Arden Key, who in case you're just – Finding out Arden Key built the city. Okay, yeah. <laughs> he, he was the key to. He was a key man. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but he's gone. Twenty-one million dollars up to Nashville to play play for the Titans. Uh, what did you think of a, a couple of those decisions? Juwan is going to be a loss, but how do you think he'll do in Kansas City? Well, first of all, you know, uh, looking at players unless you're watching them every single day is a little bit of a, a, a crapshoot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my feeling about Juwan prior to this year was mm -hmm. that, you know, the feet, his feet were not what they needed to be right. uh, to, you know, pass pro. Yeah. And and to be honest with you, this year he proved me wrong. And uh, I just saw a video of him working out after the season and he's mm -hmm. got pretty good feet. Yeah. So better than I thought he L had. Let me ask you, though, do you think that he was you were right and he needed to put that work in? Oh, absolutely, and, okay. and I think it's a a, 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 a credit to Rausha, the offensive mm -hmm. line coach, yes. because I think the offensive line coach made a difference in how he played this year. Big difference. Now, can he be a left tackle? It, it, it remains to be seen, and I think Kansas City, from their standpoint, saw one of the guys that had a really good year this year, mm -hmm. probably saw that his feet were a little bit better this year, which, again, is a credit to the offensive line coach and his work ethic, Right, shows his worth ethic, uh, ethic. Mm -hmm. and I don't know that Orlando Brown was uh, a great left tackle, so get the best opportunity out there to get the best guy, they went after Jawan Taylor, right. and that's their decision, and we'll see what happens. I was hoping that he might go for a little lower than the mm -hmm. than the franchise tag, because my thought from the beginning, which we you've heard me say, right. was pay Ingram yeah. and franchise Jawan mm -hmm. at $18 million. Yeah. Well, he got more than that. Crazy. So, uh, you know, there was no chance of doing that. And they knew that when yeah. they franchised Ingram. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to keep him. Uh, I think we're very fortunate to have Walker Little there that, that mm -hmm. uh, along with if if uh, Campbell comes back 
Mm -hmm. uh, healthy, mm -hmm. they've still got a pretty good uh, group of tackles. You know, it's so funny because you, you, you and I were like, I, I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, this makes sense if they can do it. But fa financially, it just didn't look like it was going to be, uh, they were not going to have enough money to be able to do this. It's less money to tag the tight end, more money to tag the tackle. The tight end, you look in that tight end room, there wasn't anybody else. It's like throwing a you right. know a hot dog down a hallway. There was nobody else right. there, right? So you had to make sure that you prioritized keeping Evan Ingram. Absolutely, and they drafted well to have Walker Little as a backup. Yeah, no question. And 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 you know it's going to be interesting to see uh, what Jawan does. To be honest with you, but at the same time, you know if I'm sitting at Kansas City and Orlando Browns at the end, I'm going to try to get the guy that I think is the best. It may not be. Uh, the best tackle mm -hmm. in football, but I've got to get what's out there because mm -hmm. they're in their window with right. Mahomes. Oh, and they yeah. want to keep and they got to keep that him. role, and they got to protect him. And the thing that helps them is Mahomes is agile enough mm -hmm. in the pocket and out of the pocket yeah. that they don't need uh, the number one offensive tackle in football to 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 be there. Yeah, he's very very good that way, but it still smokes my head up. I'm guessing yours as well. Orlando Brown, not only did they not bring him back, he signed for less than Jawan Taylor. Right. And Jawan is being asked to play a position he hasn't played in seven years. So we'll yeah. see how it goes. It's going, to, it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. All right. So the other ones, before we get to the ones that, that Jacksonville kept, Arden Key. We've been joking about it this week right. uh, because of just how he felt like he was kind of slighted or, or d disrespected right. by Duval. Right. That's going to be a good talking point for a while between the Titans and Jags fans. Yeah. Um, but he, I mean, is, does he fall under the heading of just a guy? He was a good impact player, but not an every down impact player. Well, first of all, he's got a great personality. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And that was his way of endearing himself to the Titans. You yep. have to understand he's exactly going in there. Right. He's got to make a name for himself in Tennessee. Yep. So, you know, of course, he's going to, you know, he's not the first one to, to no. walk out of town and, and this smack is an old, talk. Old playbook, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So, uh, well, yeah, it, he is what he is. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a third down pass rusher, uh, give, give you a few downs, uh, maybe outside, but they're, they signed him as a starter, mm -hmm. you know, money wise. 21 million bucks. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think they probably, I think that was probably the, the bottom line was mm -hmm. they, convinced him that you can come in here and start yeah and whether or not he can do that for you know 60 plays 50 plays a game or whatever mm -hmm. it is that he will gonna is gonna have to play you know we'll see what happens but uh i think we lost something yeah. i think we lost a little bit of his locker room mm -hmm. uh finesse and, and, and excitement and yeah. that type of thing and i think we lost a little bit from a rush standpoint you know he was he was a pretty good uh rusher and he's fairly young yeah because you need numbers we all know this. You need eight rotational guys that can make an impact, especially on third down, like you're talking about, fresh bodies. The loss of Dewan Smoot is probably bigger than people realize. And you add the idea that Arden Key's not going right, to Right. That there. combination is yeah. a concern. If, yeah. if Smoot doesn't come back the way he was, right. uh, you know, you're, you're really losing – uh, if you if you combine the two, you're losing one guy, yeah, and, and that, uh, that hurts. And it was an Achilles rupture on a free agent year, which right. I really feel bad for Smith. Yeah, for yeah, he, he he's not going to have a chance to recoup. Yeah, a lot that he loses here. But uh, yeah, you know, we had a we had a guy by the name of Jimmy Jones. You've heard me talk about him mm -hmm. before with mm -hmm. the Dallas Cowboys. He could only play 15 plays a game, but he would have two fumble recoveries and a, and and two sacks yeah. in 15 plays. And that's the kind of guy that you you have to have yeah. besides those guys that are starting every play for you. Yeah, conversion rate's going to be real important. It's going to be real important that Trayvon Walker takes a big step. Josh Allen has a huge fifth year. This is a big contract year for him. Right. And then we're going to see what happens in the draft. You and I have been trading ideas as far as where they should go, may go, when it comes to the defense in the first round. But they do bring back Adam Gostas. Uh, let's spend a minute on him. And Dewey Wingard, both of those guys. Well, Adam Gossis uh, is a, a role player. Mm -hmm. uh, he's in the rotation. Yeah. Uh, he he doesn't hurt you. Mm -hmm. He doesn't necessarily wow you. Right. But he's a solid football player that uh, is perfect in that role because he knows what his role is. Right. And and I think that's important. So I'm glad we have him back. He's a he's an interior lineman, which. 
you know, th- those are few and far between the guys that can play. Yes. And so uh, I'm pleased with that. Uh, Dewey Wingard, you know, I likened him, and, and I'm not saying he's the same player, but I'm I'm saying that he's the Bill Bates. Mm-hmm. And if you know who Bill Bates is, oh, Bill yeah. was a guy that played 15 years in the NFL, was a walk-on with 120 other guys with the Cowboys out of Tennessee. And the Pro Bowl designation was built by him. Because uh, he was that good of a player. He was that good of a special teams player. Uh, and and the one thing that Wingard does for you is he's a great locker room guy. Mm-hmm. He's, a, he's a core special teams player. And to be honest with you, when he does have to play with an injury or whatever, he's around the football. Mm-hmm. Now, is he going to be a guy that can play as a starter where he has to cover guys over and over and over again? That's mm-hmm. not him. But as a role player, yeah. that's a big get. Because, you know, just it was always Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. That's Dewey Winger. Yeah, and, and I got to give it to him. Uh, I, was a, I was a count against instead of a count on guy, and I got to give it to him. The leadership role definitely showed up. It really, really did. And this is a football team that needs that. They need as many of those types of guys. And don't dismiss a special teams captain. Uh, we would always talk that the special teams coach – was aware of a lot of the personnel in that locker room because he had guys from different offense, Absolutely. defense. And the same thing can be said for, for the special teams captain. Yeah, well, the coach, for sure, yeah. because uh, he's the only guy on the football team other than the head coach that mm-hmm. talks to every player. Right, right. Because I'm going to say 90% of the team is in those special teams meetings. Okay. So, you know, that's important. But the captain of the special teams – they have to have a mentality mm-hmm. that the unit is every bit as important oh, yeah. as the offensive team and the defensive team. Mm-hmm. And when you look at it, you've heard me say many times, to win a football game, you've got to win two of the three right. factors. Yeah. And that can be offense-defense one week, but it can be offense-special teams or defense-special teams. Yeah. You can win the football game. So they're a very, very important part. And sudden change plays, starting Absolutely. field position. Answering after a long drive with a big return, all those things are big. No question, and and so I'm really glad he's back. I think he he uh, exudes the mm-hmm. the uh, mentality that this team has to have going forward. All right, we can't hit the draft without hitting a couple of other guys inside the division. One Gardner Minshew is going to the Indianapolis Colts. I'm happy for him. I think it's three and a half million guaranteed, something in that neighborhood. He wanted to go somewhere where he had a chance to compete. I thought it was kind of interesting, Coach, that as soon as he signs with Indy, where he will have a chance to compete, Philadelphia goes and gets Marcus Mariota, pays him more, pays him $5 million, but Mariota knows that he's not going to have a chance to compete. Yeah, and I think uh, I think that's based on what they're, the Colts are going to do in the draft. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're probably going to take Anthony Richardson. Which may mean he has... Every chance to compete or no chance to compete. And and to be honest with you, I don't think he's going to be ready to go. And mm-hmm. I think the one thing about Gardner Minshew is he can play in this league. Yeah. We're going to see him, in my opinion. Yeah, I think and, so, too. And and so, you know, I think that was a good move on that part because if he does start for them, that's great for his career. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just going to make, whether he's a starter or a backup for the rest of his career, it's right. going to make it longer. Yeah. You know, it's going to give people an opportunity to see what he can do. And and he is a guy that is capable. I liked him when he was here. I oh, think yeah. if he'd have had a little bit better protection and, you know, that, that he would have been a little better player for yeah. us even. And, and instead of them stripping everything away from the team to make sure they tanked, right. made it impossible for him. The other part of it is, is that he walks into Indy knowing that playbook and the coach right. knows him. Right, right. And I, and I think that was a really good move. And mm-hmm. I think that's why they brought him in there. And I think he is the type of guy, you know, before he he before he went to Washington State as a quarterback right. in college, he was going to be a graduate assistant yeah. for Alabama. Mm-hmm. So he's the type of guy that can mentor a quarterback mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. He's smart. Mm-hmm. He, he's efficient with what he does. Uh, he's got great vision and understands the vision game. So, you know, for me, I think that's a good move by Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. I'm not happy about it, but it's right. a good move. Yeah, and and he, he has got a long career in football ahead of him. It could be, as you said, starter, backup, assistant coach, right. head coach, 
analyst, whatever he wants to do. Exactly. And he could probably still rock that mustache as, as an analyst <laughs> or a coach. Well, he might be a movie star as well, you know, a Westerns. It's you true. know, the Westerns are coming back. Yeah, they are. Well, it's so funny. This is a total aside. But I'm looking at, at Jacob Timmy uh, of the Gonzaga <laughs> yeah. uh, Bulldogs, and I'm thinking – there just aren't enough good Fu Manchus and headbands. Yeah, well, because listen, that, that's pl- what Gardner was plus wearing. If, plus, if you throw a, 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 oh, yeah. a 10 gallon hat on them, yeah, yeah. they're ready to roll. He's ready to go. All right. Now, uh, a couple of guys landed in the division that we need to at least bring up, Gardner being one of them. Arden Key goes up to Tennessee. Dalton Schultz from Dallas goes to the Houston Texans and gets an okay deal. It's less than what the franchise tag value is for Evan Ingram. At least I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, it's around $9 million. Uh, what did you think of that one? That, because they don't even have their quarterback. They don't know who is going to be throwing the football. Well, I think they have to have weapons. And mm-hmm. I think they know that they're going to be, be taking a quarterback, mm-hmm. whatever whatever one right. it is. Right. You know, there's four guys mm-hmm. that everybody's talking about. Right. They're going to take one of them. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be a, a, a case of get me some weapons and maybe if they feel like uh, that guy is the guy that's going to play this year, mm-hmm. uh, you know, having a tight end that has experience and can get himself open, which Schultz does, mm-hmm. uh, he's getting a little long in the tooth now. Yeah, he's getting true. up there. Uh, that's a, There's a reason the Cowboys let him go. I think there's a young tight end over there. I can't think of his name right now, but yeah, they, uh, that, the, that, the guy who came in here and scored against Jacksonville. Yeah, uh, I can't think of his name, but anyway, they got a good young tight end, so they let him go. And uh, to me, uh, I think that's a good move for Houston, and and uh, it's a little bit of a prove it. I've still got it type of a situation with Schultz. All right, now let's take a look at a couple of mock drafts that have come out. Pete Prisco, one of them. Mel Kiper, the other. Uh, so let's get to Mel. Uh, with apologies to Pete, uh, let's get to Mel because he's kicked out uh, another version. He's he's reached 3.0 with his first round mock that he's put out there. And what you're trying to figure out is after the Carolina Panthers traded to get up to that top spot, what is going to happen? Chicago takes a step back. Carolina moves up. You got Houston right behind them. Uh, and then he throws a couple of trades in here. So I'm going to just run, rattle through the first five okay. and then get to Jacksonville's pick. But in the beginning, he chooses... C.J. Stroud for the Carolina Panthers. Then Bryce Young goes next to the Houston Texans. Then there's a trade, Indianapolis and Arizona. Indy moves up. They get, via the trade, Will Levis. So the top three quarterbacks. We'll finish out the top five in a second. Right. But come on. I know who the fifth one is. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? (laughs) Will Levis? Yeah. Yeah. He's better than Anthony Richardson, at least right now he is. But that, that... that shocked me just a little bit. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know if that's going to be the it's, case. It's, it's mock season. Yeah, so. obviously. You know, uh, the one thing about Levis is it, it, a little bit like Richardson mm-hmm. in that traits make a big difference in the yes. NFL. Yes. So you look at Levis, he's big, he's got a strong arm, he's, you know, his upside is pretty good probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I can see them, you know, him, I, I really thought that he would have been the guy that, Carolina took if they stayed right where they were, he, right. either he or Richardson. Exactly. So they're both, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're moving up because a quarterback position is so few and far between the good ones that if anybody's close to having the mm-hmm. traits that you're looking for, you're going to be willing to gamble on mm-hmm. those guys. And and I don't know if there's going to be trades or whatever, but mm-hmm. uh, I think that uh, those four quarterbacks are going to go in the top 10, in my yeah, opinion. It's crazy. Uh, my new joke is there's a supply chain problem. Oh, yeah. And, it, and it's the quarterback position. So the logic for Mel Kuyper is that new Indies, Indy Colts head coach Shane Steichen helped Jalen Hurts take a massive step for the Eagles. He could do the same or excited to try and get a hold of Will Levis. Yeah. Can you see that? Well, I think it's very similar to uh, uh, the uh, C.J. Stroud mm-hmm. uh, thing with with Carolina, mm-hmm. with with uh, Frank Wright. Frank Wright. Yeah. They like big quarterbacks, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, and that's something that, that is, you know, there's a there's a reason for that. Right. You know, they, if you look at it, if you put 10 quarterbacks together that are great, mm-hmm. eight of them are going to be six, four, six, five, and then there's going to be a couple that are going to be six foot, mm-hmm. six, one. Six, right. You know, so there's precedent for the big quarterback, and I think that that is something that, uh, you know, that, that, may be in, in the making. 
You All know? right, so let me give you these, just, just for the heck of it. Okay, so Anthony Richardson is in the top five uh, for Mel Kuypers, but let's just stay with the measurables that you just mentioned. So let me flip over to Pete Prisco, who decides that Bryce Young will be the number one pick to the Carolina Panthers. He says he's the best passer in this class. Will the Panthers take a risk on picking uh, a 5'10", 200-pound quarterback uh, first overall? Uh, that's a tough thing to do, but that's what we're looking at. We're looking at a 5'10 guy. We're looking at a 6'2 guy in C.J. Stroud. And we're looking at a 6'4", 6'5 guy in Anthony Richardson. And we're looking at a 6'4 guy in Will Levis. Right. Those measurables, how important? I, I think they're really important. Yeah. Uh, you still need the software and the hardware, but how important are they? Well, first of all, uh, I like to go by film, mm -hmm. yeah. whether the guy can play or he can't play. It's a smart That's way to me. go. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, I, I when I look at those guys, Bryce Young is the best one on film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind. Right. Now, he has some pretty good guys around him, but mm -hmm. so does C.J. Stroud. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, Richardson didn't have that that same luxury. luxury That's true. Right? That's true. Uh, I don't know about Levis. I don't think Kentucky had No, and there were injuries, uh, yeah, line some, protection. Some, okay. So when I look at film, there's no question on Bryce Young is the best all-around guy. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, what else do you look at? A guy 5'10 is going to have some disadvantages. Right. One of them is injury. Mm -hmm. And he's not 5'10, 200. He's 5'10, 180. Kyler Murray Five is, uh, would you guess Kyler Murray is about 15 pounds heavier? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm guessing, I'm guessing the same. Yes. And, and to me, that is the, uh, that's the tipping point. Are mm -hmm. you willing to, to make that? Take a chance. Fair, very, very okay? fair criticism. So to me, as far as whether or not he's going to be successful in the league, I do believe he's going to be successful mm -hmm. if he if he doesn't get hurt. Right. Is Richardson going to be successful? The traits say that. The physical traits. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure the mental traits, if you're right. going to make a gamble to, to take that in the first round, yeah. I don't know. It, you know. So to me, I think I think they're going to go with C.J. Stroud. With the first pick. I, I do. I, I feel the same way. I feel like that's going to become, over the next handful of weeks, that it's going to go in that direction. The only reason I say that is because you're splitting the difference between the big project that's 6'4", 244, and the really, really gifted player, passer, everything you'd want in, in, in Bryce Young. But Bryce Young might be 60 pounds lighter than Anthony Richardson. Right. And C.J. Stroud is in the 6'2 neighborhood, two and a quarter, and fairly sturdy and can move. Not right. com, not not 100% take off and run guy, right. but agile enough. Yes. And a, and a fairly gifted passer. You make a great point, Coach. Those guys both had weapons to throw to. Neither one of them was operating on their own. So now you got to figure out which of those guys can thrive in the national football. There is a chance that that uh, Carolina likes them both the same, mm -hmm. would take either one of them. So there's no guarantee that they're going to stay at number one. They may back to number two. Mm -hmm. they, if, they, if they could get it's something, possible. you know, and, and take, they, they may like all three of the quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. So right. you just don't know that, you uh, know. I I just think if they stay where they're at, they're going to go with Stroud. That's yeah. just my opinion. Uh, yeah, I feel like he is the safer, bigger guy. Absolutely. And and they're Eddie's had history with those type of quarterbacks. Yes, yes. So they threw out a stat on ESPN, one of the shows. Maybe it was Good Morning Football. I can't remember, but they threw out the size guy that Frank Reich has coached. Yes, six five, six right. five, six four, and it was Carson Wentz. Andrew Luck, going back to when yes, he first got right. to Indianapolis, uh, Philip Rivers, Matt Ryan, you can go down the line, yeah. all big guys. And so Will Levis slash Anthony Richardson would be attractive to Reich, but I think they probably look at a 6'2 C.J. Stroud and say, today's game, he's going to have to move, he's going to have to make some decisions, right. he's got to take some punishment. But that's that's the, the great situation Carolina is in because mm -hmm. you just don't know what they think of Levis and no. Richardson. No. So if they think 
enough of those guys mm-hmm. because of the size and the and the traits and what going forward, they very well could back all the way out to four or five and still get the quarterback. That is true. And pick up a bunch of picks. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting. I think sitting at eight, they were probably worried about getting any quarterback. Mm-hmm. To be they honest, with you. they had to make a move to get one of them, and and they did. All right, so let's wrap up our first round discussion with the Jags, at least according to Mel Kiefer and according to Pete, things can change. I want you to give the fans out there kind of the priority list of what you think is happening with that pick. But Mel Kiefer has Will McDonald, the fourth defensive end out of Iowa State. Uh, And this is the write-up from Mel. After years of spending big money in free agency, the Jaguars have largely stayed out of the fray this year. Uh, They have stuck to re-signing so far. Uh, This young roster is going to grow and improve together, and that's a good thing for Jacksonville fans. There aren't many obvious holes on the step chart. Might might disagree a little bit, but anyway, he says there aren't many obvious holes on the step chart, but the loss of Arden Key in free agency means there are rush-edging snaps to be had. Enter McDonald, who had a really strong senior bowl and showed off great physical attributes at the combine. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think he's a good athlete. I've seen him. Uh, I, you know, I don't think that that position, unless they're thinking about moving uh, uh, Trayvon Walker, Trayvon Walker yeah. uh, I don't think that's going to be the number one thought process in their mind. I think, uh, you know, they might take somebody in free agency at the end, a, a mm-hmm. veteran pass rusher to take Arden Key's position. Mm-hmm. In, in my mind, the, the, the number one situation that they're looking back, in my mind, mm-hmm. should be corner. I, I want you to repeat the one main thing, and we'll probably get you to do this a handful of times leading up to the draft. The reason why you say if they go get an edge player is because you think yeah. they might change positions for the number one overall pick from last year. It, that, to me, uh, I've heard Nolan Smith. Mm-hmm. Isn't he yeah. the other He's one? He's Pete's uh, Pete first Prisco's yeah. first pick. You know, I've heard those kind of guys. Van Ness and a handful yeah, of these other yeah. guys. Well, you know, Nolan Smith is an outside linebacker. Yeah. So the only way they would take an outside linebacker, in my mind, is based on what they think of Walker. Okay. Do we have to move him? Do we have to move him inside? Is he going to be a much better player and a difference maker inside? Mm-hmm. Uh, are we going to a 4-3? Are we going to stay in 3-4 and use a uh, what I call a reduced front mm-hmm. to put the one of the outside backers in the a three technique? Right. You know, become a three technique. Which is what Trayvon would be. Would ha- would be. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know, those kind of things will make the difference in my mind. I just don't think that that position is where they're going to go. I feel like they they're they're they would have to be moving somebody to make that move. And Matt Hayes on the primetime show mm-hmm. brought up a great point that uh, Greg Lloyd mm-hmm. is a similar type of a... Oh, Devin Lloyd. Devin yeah. Lloyd. Excuse mm-hmm. me. I, yeah. got the, I got the Lloyd that's yeah. out there on yeah. my mind. <laughs> uh, Devin Lloyd is a similar type player. Yeah. Are you being redundant if you take... Uh, an edge guy and and having him on the roster if you're going to stay three four yeah and 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 I I made the point on prime time that if they were to go edge I think they need interior guys you're going to tell them who you think they need but if they were to go edge in three drafts three of the last four drafts they have picked number twenty overall as an edge rusher. They have picked number seven overall as an edge rusher. They have picked number one overall as an edge rusher, and they added two other linebackers in last year's draft in Devin Lloyd and Chad Muma. Think about that, Coach. That's four first-round picks in the last in the last four drafts that were all supposed to do something off the edge, and right. then they added Muma, who we don't know exactly yeah. where he's going to end well, up. Well, and the other thing that we didn't mention is uh, I believe that if you take a – I think Nolan uh, Smith is mm-hmm. like 6'2", 239, yeah, yeah, somewhere. Yeah, 6'2", 240, let's call it. You take one of those guys, if he can't do it, what does he do? Uh, he, he he's not an inside linebacker. No. And he's not going to ever – he might bulk up 
if they were in a 4-3, he might bulk up to mm-hmm. 270 and be a, a, a weak side defensive end with right. his hand on the ground. Yeah. But that's what you got in Walker over there. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just, and I already, just don't think that that's going to be the direction yeah. they go. And I you really already know. have Chad Muma that will be that 6'2", 250, yeah, or 240, exactly. whatever he might yeah. be, working yeah. inside. Yep. All right, now, give us where you think they're going to go. Well, first of all, I think they're going to go corner. Okay. And especially if if the guys that are there, there's a, it's a pretty good corner draft, which mm-hmm. you could say, well, maybe they can wait till the second round because mm-hmm. they got Tyson Campbell, you know, in the second round. Yeah. But if they've got uh, the guys I've got here, Porter, Ringo, Gonzalez, or Banks available mm-hmm. at 24, yeah. I would take them because just, I think that that makes the pass rush better without getting an edge rusher. Just for what it's worth, Frisco goes. Deontay Banks out of Maryland, one of the guys you mentioned, right after yeah, right. the Jags take Nolan Smith. Right. Cornerback, he's six feet, 200 pounds, uh, enlists the reasons why he thinks that they should go get him. Right. Uh, but but I'm, I'm with you. You and I will battle over, I want an interior pass rusher to disintegrate the pocket. Right. That's what I want. Right. Uh, because I feel like they've – Found a guy in Darius Williams. They found a guy in Tyson Campbell. That's one free agency, one uh, through the draft. They certainly still need another corner, but I still would like to see someone impact the middle. I just don't think they have, unless Trayvon Walker goes inside. Yeah, and 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 that's really if you just said what what am I put in order? Mm-hmm. Corner, mm-hmm. interior pass rusher, mm-hmm. possible offensive line mm-hmm. because of the Jawan. Taylor situation, right. where are they going? Cam Robinson injury situation. Right. And then tight end would be my fourth. So that that's that's my order. Mm-hmm. But you always have to remember that once it passes 18, 19, 20, mm-hmm. up until 20, uh, up until the end of the second round, right. those players are basically, basically with different traits here or there, the same guy mm-hmm. at yeah. different positions, different traits, what you're looking for. So you take the guy that helps your football team the most based on the position once you get to that point. All right. Uh, This is the first of what will be a a countdown to the draft. So we'll look at the first round. We'll start to look. If they do this, then what's the next thing they can do? And we'll have a little fun with that. Uh, But the free agency period pretty much came and went. We'll see if they add one more guy. I call it secondary spending. Right. Uh, You know, this is like – not dollar general store, but it's somewhere between, you know, the high price free agents yeah. that, you know, that middle. Yeah. yeah the middle round. Yeah. Middle ground. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. what is what someone's willing to take. So we'll right. keep an eye on that. Yep. Uh, but great catching up, Coach. Right. As always, great. Dave Campo, Joe C. We'll talk to you again next week with a little Campo and Joe.